Welcome to tutorial number one, introduction to HTML. This tutorial is for beginners and for those of you who have just started with HTML, you don't need to worry because you don't need any prerequisite knowledge for HTML. I'll be making around 10 tutorials and hopefully I'll cover each and every important part of HTML and at the end of which you'll be able to create some beautiful pages. Now jumping right in, the full form of HTML is hypertext markup language and it is used to create web pages. For example, I have this web page here with me. If I go to tools and view source, so here I have the source which is actually uh, a lot of text so you can see I have a HTML tag, I have a head tag somewhere down below yeah here I have a body tag so this is actually the code that went behind making this web page so that is the main purpose of HTML now to make such a code you have two options either you can make us such a code in a simple text editor for example notepad in notepad you have to write each and every tag by yourself or the second option is to use a web page editor for example Adobe Photoshop uh, sorry Adobe Dreamweaver now you can see my screen has been divided into two parts the right which is a blank screen and on the left you can see some HTML codes now if I go to the right part of my screen and I insert any image let's say this image if I insert this image so you can see on the left part of the screen this web editor, uh, editor actually it generates a HTML tag corresponding to this image automatically. So uh, you may have a question that this web page e uh, editor seems as the easier of the both of options to make a HTML page. But actually it's not so. You, you know the more objects you keep on adding on the right part of your screen. You know this ta this whole code here. This this becomes very complicated and in future if you, if you have to edit some part of a tag until and unless you know which tag corresponds to which part of which object you will not be able to edit this edit uh, you will not be able to make any changes in your web pages so the ideal condition is when you use this simple text editor as well as a web page editor in tandem and uh, you know we are at the beginning stage of a learning so we'll just stick to this simple web page editor and uh, you know in time I'll tell you how we can use a web page editor to our advantage now one thing that I want to discuss before starting is nesting I've read a lot of forums on HTML and some and and most of the places nesting has not been discussed properly now nesting is basically the order of operation now in HTML you know it's all about tags so this is the opening of a tag this HTML is the opening of a tag and here with the forward slash this is a closing of a tag now in html i can close more i can open both more than one tag at a time i've opened html then i've opened head and then i've opened title but while closing the tags i have to keep in mind the sequence with which i open them in the first place so i'm closing title first then i'm closing head and then i'm closing html so if you see it this way this title tag is actually embedded inside the head tag so it makes sense to close title first and then head similarly the head tag is embedded inside html so it makes sense to close head first and then html now here this is a very simple uh, this is a very simple code you add you as you keep on adding more tags to your html page it becomes more complicated and sometimes you know you may have written something in your code but it doesn't appear on the web page it's because it's not nested properly so you have to keep in mind that your text the code that which you are writing it should be nested properly now tags are basically of two types uh, you all all this tag here you can see this is a title tag and this is a closing of a title tag so such a tag is known as a pair tag it has a opening tag as well as a closing tag now, i have one tag called break line so this tag is complete in itself it doesn't need a closing tag so this is called as a unpaired tag now jumping right into it you can see html is used uh, at the beginning of the end of a page of your page head contains all the information about the header in your file now you have title so title i'll show you what is the use of title i'll save it now while saving keep in mind save with dot html extension so it creates a web page okay right over here so you see our introduction to html right written over here so if i change the title to say something uh say z and if again again i save it so you can see the title changes to xyz so this is the basic use of title tag now one thing that i want to discuss with you is hexadecimal system that is uh, using color coding in html now in in our day to day life we use this decimal system it contains 10 
basic digits 0 1 2 3 4 till 9 and all the other digits are the combination of these 10 digits for example 13 is a combination of 1 and 3 say 5 23 it's a combination of 5 2 and 3 similarly we have another system of numbering called hexadecimal system a zero of a decimal corresponds to zero of in a hexadecimal it goes on till 9 9 of a decimal corresponds to 9 of a hexadecimal but a 10 of a decimal actually corresponds with an a 11 with a b 12 with C and uh, it goes on to 15 till F. So you can count these. Hexadecimal system has uh, 16 digits and all the other digits are in hexadecimal system are combination of these 16 digits. Now uh, how to use this hexadecimal? For example, in somewhere in my page I want to define the intensity of red color as 13 units. So instead of writing 13, I'll actually write D because HTML recognizes hexadecimal system and not and not uh, this decimal system. So this is about color coding. I was discussing tags. So I have a tag called body. Now, whatever element you introduce in in your HTML page has to between the has to be in between this opening and closing of a body tag. Now there is something called attribute. Attribute are uh, you can say they are extension of a of a tag. For example, I have a attribute called BG color, which is actually a short form for background color. Now. Uh, whenever I am defining something, it has to be between two inverted commas. You have to make sure that whenever you are defining a number or anything, it has to be between two inverted commas. Now, HTML doesn't recognize color by its name. You know, you can't write orange here or red here. It won't work. You have to write. You know, there's a code behind every every color. So I'll just I'll just take an example and I'll show you how this works. Again, I'll save it. So when I refresh it, you can see I have green color over here. So how did I manage to get this? Actually, the format for color is red, red, green, green, blue, blue. So you can see this 0, 0 corresponds to a 0 intensity of red. Now F, F was corresponding to 15 of a decimal. So F cross F, it means that I have 225th intensity of green color. And again for blue, I have 0 intensity. So this, which you can see, this is, a, this is the highest intensity of green color that you can generate in a HTML page. And uh, you know, whenever you are mentioning color, it has to be presided with this hashtag over here. These are the. This is a very small thing. You just have to keep this in mind. So uh, you know, you see, you have a lot of colors that you can work with in HTML. 225 shades of red, 225 shades of green, and 225 shades of blue, and you can mix them also. You have a wide range of colors. I, you see this. This code. Uh, this is the highest intensity of red and zero intensity of blue and green. So. It, this corresponds to this color. This code corresponds to cyan color. This is for blue. This is for yellow. Now this F F F F F F. This is a mixture of all the colors, and this will produce white color. And that's why you're not able to see a horizontal line here because the background is white. You see all these horizontal lines in the previous cases, but you can't see a horizontal line here. Now zero 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 zero. This corresponds to black color. This code corresponds to a shade of orange. This code is corresponding to a shade of purple. So you can note this down and you know you can produce colors yourself. You just have to put a value between 0 to F in all these places and you'll get a new color every time. Now jumping right into the tags, I have prepared this page for you uh, and I also have an output. Now we'll compare each and every tag. Uh, okay, I have the HTML head, title, body. Now I have this bold tag and the, uh, you know, this B tag, this stands for bold and anything I write between starting and the ending of a bold tag will appear at the top left corner. You see this is in bold. Again, I've used the I tag for italics and this stands for italics and anything that I write between this actually appears in italics. Same for the underline. Now, I can also change the, um, you know, the alignment. I've used the center tag and you see this text right here. This this is because of the center tag that I have used. Now, if I want something to appear on my screen, but I want it to appear striked out, so you, I can use this strike tag. You see, this text, this appears striked out. Now, you see a BR tag over here. So, I have left a line between both. This is bold, this is latex, uh, italics, and this is underlined in my uh, notepad. But HTML does not recognize this whatever you do in your notepad. You, you know, you have to use tags over here. You may format it as much as you like in your notepad, but as HTML will only recognize the tags. So BR tag actually is used to uh, break line. It is actually used to uh, give a line between two things. So this is my sentence. This is typed out. And my next sentence is this font has been edited by the font tag. Uh, tag. So you see here uh, the display has shifted to the next line. And this is because of the BR tag. 
now all these above sentences they have the default font and size i can change them by the font tag and these are the attributes face size and color size is uh, obvious you can put any random number in it to experiment with different sizes you can put any different color now face stands for what kind of font you are using i have used nirvana font now the final tag this is very interesting this is a hr tag hr stands for horizontal line now i have set the alignment to center i have set the size to 20 size is actually the thickness of this line and the width is what part of the screen it covers so alignment is center therefore you see this line in the center now if i remove this width if i remove this width and if i save it uh, tags.html and when i refresh it you see this line covers the entire page so the default setting for a hr tag if you don't define the width it will come cover the entire page uh, something for you that is called marquee marquee is a very important and a very uh, brilliant feature of html this is what you can achieve with marquee now i'll tell you uh, what is the code behind it so this is a marquee tag and anything you write between the marquee will have actually have its effect now you see in the next line i have changed the behavior to slide and Again in the next line I have changed the behavior to alternate. By default the behavior of a marquee is set to scroll. Now I will show you the difference between all of them. So you see the first line. The text is coming from the right of your screen and it's moving towards left and it will keep on repeating this activity. This activity is known as scroll. You see this alternate. It, it will alternate between your screen. This activity is called alternate and you see this slide. It comes out once and it will stop at this end of the screen. You see it, it has stopped. So this feature is known as slide. Now, uh, so this is the marquee tag and this is its first attribute called behavior. Now I can also change the direction. I have, uh, in the fourth line, I have defined it to right. Now if I refresh it, you see all these are coming from the right of a screen and moving towards left. But this line, this is actually coming out of the right, left hand side and moving towards left that, that is because I have defined the behavior to right. I can also, uh, uh, you know, define the direction to up and down. Now this line, I have set the number of loops to three. So this marquee, this will appear on the screen three times, and then it, then it won't appear. Now this attribute, in this attribute, I have uh, used two scroll amount ten and twenty. Of course, twenty will be faster than ten. You see this example. This is the example for scroll amount twenty, and this is the example for ten. You see uh, the speed of 20 is obviously it has to be greater than 10. In the next line I have scroll delay uh, 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 attribute. So scroll delay corresponds to this. You know, you see this is slowed down. Again I have BG color. So you see this marquee actually appears with a background color. That's because I've used an attribute called BG color. And you can use all these attributes in one marquee. I've just separated them to show you the different behaviors. And in the final marquee, I have defined a height, I have defined a width, I have defined the edge space, which is horizontal space. It is actually the horizontal margin. And V space is vertical space, which is vertical margin. Now you see in width, I have put 50%. So this is completely fine. You know, you can put a number or you can uh, put it in terms of percentage. So 50% means it will cover half of the screen. Now you see this text. So this space is actually the V space, vertical space. This space is the edge space. And you see, uh, because I have defined the width to 50%, it is not covering the entire line it is just appearing on half of the screen so you know you can experiment with marquee final thing i have for you is symbols so these are a few symbols i'll just copy them and i'll paste them over here and i'll just save them dot html so yeah i'll show you uh yeah so this is my test now you can see uh this leave this ampersand nbps semicolon i'll discuss this in is in the next class this and lt uh, semicolon so this gives me a less than sign epsilon gt semicolon this gives me a greater than sign similarly pound gives me uh, the pound sign euro is actually not working and then cent gives me a cent yen gives me a yen registered gives me a beautiful symbol for registered and copy gives me a symbol for copyright again trade is not working actually this is used for trademark symbol but it's not working and if i want the ampersand symbol itself i can use a ampersand now if i want to separate these i can just use a br tag everywhere and uh, you know it will work i'll just show you if i use this and if i save it and when i refresh you see the first two have got separated it's because of the br tag so 
the reason why euro and trade don't work is because not every tag is compatible with every browser here i'm using a google chrome so uh, it it is possible that this tag is working uh, this tag will work in another browser but for google chrome this tag doesn't work so this is a minor you can say blip in html otherwise it's completely fine so this is all in the first class and you can subscribe to my channel i'll um, keep you posted so thanks for watching cheers